Hey, how y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're getting our Father's Word in the book of Mark, chapter 2. Let's begin with some prayer. Father God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May we never stop trudging that path towards you. And may we not stay on the ground when we fell on a stumbling block. May we dust ourselves up six times and get up seven. Father God, may we never give up and understand the word of perseverance. May we understand the word of complacency, and we need you. We need you every day, every hour, every second. Show us what we're doing wrong in our spiritual life. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and may we put on the gospel shoe, the the shoes of the gospel peace of Jesus Christ. May we put on the armor of God. May the sword of the Spirit be this holy word in our life the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, and the girth that, hold, that holds our pants up and our, of truth. And thank, thank you for listening to us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right. Mark 2, where you at, Mark? All right, here we go. Mark 2, verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And two, and the straightaway many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. They were, the people were excited. Jesus came. His uh, reputation is spreading through the land. And he is truly the people's champion. Verse 3. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy. He had problems walking, moving, which was born of four. I believe that's uh, all four limbs. Almost like a paraplegic. Four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And then they had broken it up. So they, they laid down the bed they're on, sick of the palsy lay. So they um, lowered him from the top because it was so compact with people that nobody can get, get in. Five. When Jesus saw the faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. Six, but there was a certain scribe sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Seven, why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? So we understand that the, the scribes, the scribes and Pharisees, they are calling Jesus that what he's doing is blasphemies. Only God can forgive sin. And God gave the authority to Jesus, the son of God, to forgive sin. And understanding that sin can manifest the sickness in the, in the physical realm. This is not the first. This is not the first um, example. Other people, and I believe in Leviticus, Leviticus 14, there's a ceremony of uh, purification with two doves, one's killed and the blood sprinkled on the one dove and it's released in the, in the Torah. And they believed that that was a way to, to cure leprosy. And they believe leprosy was the sin of pride. That was the origin of so when Jesus is doing this, understanding that this is another example of sickness being cured by forgiveness of sins. So that's why we always got to not worry about being politically correct or trying to what we're going to say to offend men. You give it, be a straight and narrow shooter. See, the thing is, there's going to be people who aren't going to listen no matter what. And just because you do the right thing don't mean it's going to turn out right. But those ones that are humbled in heart and are willing to do whatever it takes and willing to listen, 
So do what it takes to do what it takes. So that word blasphemy is in the Strong's is 988. It means slander, abusive, scurrilous language, blasphemy, uh, especially against God, evil speaking, railing. So understanding that this is an example of blasphemy, saying you forgive sin, and another one saying you, you, uh, you are God is another way of saying that you are speaking blasphemies. There is a, a third, I believe, way of speaking blasphemies when they blaspheme the Holy Spirit in the book of Matthew when uh, they said that the, the Pharisees said that he does works by Beelzebub, basically saying that the, what the Holy Spirit is doing is evil. That's huge. That's a huge um, sin against the Lord. Now, some may not understand Christianity. And this is, I emphatically say, just stay out of accusations towards the Holy Spirit. God will forgive you. The slander was saying against him, his son, but the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. So understanding that. Here are other uh, here are other examples of blasphemy, and I just want you to uh, understand this. So, because you know, one of my passions is understanding prophecy. And I want you to understand as well. That's what really got me uh, really got me enticed to do this was the prophecy portions, and uh, everything is important in God's word, even to the commas, even to the periods. Even the capitalization, uh, even the numbers. So let's just go ahead, blasphemy. Let's do a little quick study. Matthew 12, 30 to 32. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathered not with me is scattered abroad. 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Very serious sin right there. An example was they were calling the miracles that Jesus was doing evil. Mark, and you, why is this? Because it persuades the masses. It brings a lot of people. It, it's like a, a spiritual bomb. when. You drive people away from God, and God don't like that. When you're an influencer or you're a a ruler in the land or a priest, you're held to higher standard because now you're not just affecting your yourself. Where God could be long suffering and patient that you come around, you're affecting the masses, and God's not going to tolerate that. Mark two seven. Why does this man that speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? John ten. 30 through 33. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up the stones against to stone him. 32. Jesus answered and said, Many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of these works did you stone me? 33. The, and the Jews answered him, saying, For good works we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou being a man makest thyself God. So this is another example of blasphemy one forgiving sins because god could do only and one that's saying you're you're uh you you have the they're saying he's saying he's he's god but he's not he's saying he's the son of god and by doing so this is hard for people to wrap their mind around there are three father Son and Holy Spirit, but they're like-minded. They are one in mind, one in will, one in driven purpose. And uh, understanding that, that they work together as one. So let's go to Revelation 13. One, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads. Those seven heads are seven mountains of altar worship. We have seven continents. 
understanding this is worldwide, and ten horns, ten horns of ten horns of power, they give it to kings around the world, and upon his horns ten crowns that that's given, and upon the heads of the name of blasphemy. So we understand what that blasphemy is saying. I can forgive sin, and I am a, I am one with God. You, you or even saying you're Jesus or God, right? Revelations 13, 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. These great things are, are flatteries and talks of peace. And the power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. So that's equal to three and a half years. Right? That's a uh, 12 times 3 is 36 plus 4. Plus six or plus two, so that's six, so it's three and a half years. That's the middle of Daniel's 70th week, if you study prophecy. And that's in the midst of that week, the Antichrist will break the covenant or the peace between Israel and the enemies of, of God. And uh, so, understanding this. All right, let's get back on to Mark. It's getting hot in here. All right. Mark 2, verse 8. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned with themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? See, only God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit could see your minds and your hearts. So the book of Ezekiel 8. God took Ezekiel into the mind of the priests that were in the temple that were worshiping in dark chambers and also that were worshiping in their imagery of their mind. So understanding that when you hear this, don't take this in vain, that Jesus can see their hearts. Only a supernatural being can do that. Other we do is all we do is perceive our facial expression and, um, you know, body language or tone of voice. Um, we got cues, but Jesus actually could see into your heart. Verse 9. Whether it is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. So asking him a question. Of, they're in a dilemma. 10. Both. That ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the sick of the palsy. 11. I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. 12. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified. God saying, we never saw it out of this fashion. 13. Beautiful. Christ doing miracles. Christ being uh, the, the Prince of Peace. Doing those things for us we cannot do for ourselves. Being our champion. Being our king. Being our high priest. Being the good shepherd. Verse 13. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him. And he taught them. 14. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the, re the recept of customs, and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. So we have also right here, we have Matthew. This is when Matthew was called, right, the apostle. And he was at receipt of customs collecting taxes. So he got up and followed him. Verse 15. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many. And they followed him. 
16. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? 17. When Jesus heard it, he hath said unto him, They that are whole have no need of physicians. But they that are sick, I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Again, Christ bringing up the fact of being a physician. Being a physician and people that are sick. People that are sick. And also dealing with sin. To bring that to pass, where people can be healed and be whole, right? What were these Pharisees bringing up? I believe they're bringing up Psalms one: "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful." Two, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. Three, and he shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water, that bringeth forth the fruit in its seasons, as leave also. So not wither, and whosoever he doeth shall prosper. For the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff in the wind driven away. By therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Six, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but in the way of the ungodly shall perish. So Jesus is bringing the new covenant. We do not partake in the way that are the, the sinful nature of the sinner. But we love the sinner and we we uh, bring them to our battleground, which is the church, which is outside of their uh, their stomping grounds where they commit most of their sins, either being a drug den or uh, a bar. Some people are, are have had the privilege of being sent. It's not out of the realm of that happening, but. You have to get permission from the Lord to do that because you're going in a place with demons and understanding you got to be led by the spirit. Now, Christ said to repent. That means to turn away. And I got it up here. Um, Strong 33, 41 to change of mind, right? Repentance to change in the inner man. Very important, very important. Fight them sins, fight that that evil temptation, and if you fall, get back up. Perseverance. Do not accept it as the norm. Do whatever it takes. Pray, fast, rebuke in the name of Jesus. Fight, fight, fight. This is not working for your salvation, but it is as part of the deal. Being born again. Now, I'm always going to say this, uh, NIV, this is the equivalent of Mark 2.17. I'm just going to read the last part of it. Again, I am not called the righteous, but sinners to repentance. NIV, but sinners. NLT, they are sinners. ESV, sinners. Berin Standard Version, sinners. Berin Literal Bible, but sinners. King James Bible to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. New King James but sinners to repentance. New King James has subtle teach changes with commas that mess with prophecy. So I'd be careful with New King James. Why go to the New King James when you got the Old King James and you can learn the Eng Old English font in 20 minutes if you're willing. NASB but sinners. NASB 95 but sinners. But sinners. Legacy Standard Bible but sinners. Look at the changes. Taking out repentance. Amplified Bible. Humbly seek forgiveness, but sinners. Christian Standard Bible. Call righteous, but sinners. Holman Christian Standard Bible. The righteous, but sinners. Amer American Standard Version. To call the righteous, but sinners. Aramaic Bible in plain English. To call the righteous, but sinners. Contemporary English Version. I came to invite sinners. Again and again and again. All these standard versions, Mark 2.17 is a great example to you to stand against these Bibles that are being changed and preserving the truth. 
I will not debate that to keep the video down. I've done it in other videos, but crossing this again, I can't help but to, to bring that up in case you, you're barely jumping in right now. Okay, Mark 2, verse 8. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast, and they came and said unto him, Why did the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but the disciples not? 19, and Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? So Jesus referencing himself as the bridegroom, Understanding this is important in prophecy as well. As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. 20. But the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. And then they fast in those days. So, Jesus answering them. You don't, you don't have to fast when I'm here, but when I'm gone, you will. That's why. 21. No man also sewed the piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up, taken away from the old, and the rent was made worse. So, God's a God of order. And when Christ dies on the cross, salvation will be offered amongst the, all the nations. All the nations. And by coming to Christ, you're cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And then you're able to receive the Holy Spirit and be baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Spirit that dwells in you is greater than the one who lives in the world. So understanding when you're born again, you're getting a new mind, a new body, and a, a new lease on life for eternity. Right? And uh, understanding the body that we have this physical body is not going to be the body in, in the heavenlies. There is a heavenly body that will receive free of sickness and pain and death. And um, understanding that you got to do, do things in order as well. And let's continue. 22. And no man putteth new wine into an old bottle. So understanding we're dealing with wine and lambskin. That's what, what the bottle was. It was lambskin. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles. So understanding the fermenting process, an old bottle is wor worn down and already stretched. So when you put new wine in there, you're filling it to capacity. It's going to stretch twice as much. And that elasticity is already spent. So, and the wine is spilled and the bottle will be married, but the new wine must be put in a new bottle. So as it busts open, then you, all that new wine is, is done with. So there's a process of, of what God is, uh, is telling us. And to understand that, that he is there for us. He's there to guide us. Verse 23. How do we renew our minds? With the word of God. We seal in the truth. How do we do it? Take care of our bodies, diet, and exercise. God gave us all the things that we should eat. Whether you do it or not is your choice. You won't go to hell, but understanding that to be a good steward is to show the discipline and try to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And by not doing so, you are limiting your your ways of um, being healthy, be having the energy to get up, to serve the Lord, to uh, to do the things it takes, the strength. And if you don't, then you're just limiting. You're not the most effect. You're not at your best, and you're not at maximum effectiveness to serving the Lord. I hope you understand what I said. But twenty three, and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. 24. And the Pharisees said un, unto him, Behold, why, they, why do they on the Sabbath that which is not lawful? 25. And he said unto them, Have you never read 
what David did when he had a need and was hungered, he that went with him. So Christ is saying, did you hear what David did? And this will be in uh, 1 Samuel. It's 1 Samuel 21. And I went 1 through 6. You should get that. And uh, see, I didn't understand this because I didn't see King David as a as anything but a king. But actually, in the book of Acts, talks as King David was not just a king; he was a prophet. And uh, what do priests do on the Sabbath? They work. They work to feed the people the word of God. They work to prepare the things that needed to be prepared and who is jesus christ he is the high priest right he is the high priest and the apostles who were the apostles his servants understanding he did not violate the sabbath but actually they failed to see who he truly was um, let's let's go to verse 25 i believe we started stop there Let's go back to 24, and then we'll just finish. 24, and the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do that do on the Sabbath day, which is not lawful? 25, and he said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and was hungered, and they were with him? 26, how he went to the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest, and did eat the shoe bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also them that were with him? 27, so understanding the priest and understanding Hebrews, the book of Hebrews talks about Christ as that high priest. He is out of the order of Melchizedek, which is, I believe, in uh, also in Genesis 14, where Abraham gave a tenth of his spoils to him. Verse 27. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So. The Sabbath was made for men for a day of rest, right? Because you need to heal. You need to spend time with the Lord at the minimum a day a week. I don't suggest that. I suggest every day if you can. Uh, or don't stop. Pray without ceasing. Continuing, reaching, uh, begging, Lord, come into my life. I humble myself before you. I'll, I'll look at myself. Even the ugly truth. I want to be near you. I want to worship you. 28. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Understanding. The word Lord is also a word for priest. Right? King of kings and priest of priests or Lord of lords. Right? Understanding what Jesus said. Jesus did not say, did not, do not. Uh, people use this as reason not to keep the sabbath holy not to do the things that are that god had appointed to us since the beginning understanding this that we don't we are uh asked to do something or actually not asked commanded forgive me now it's hard to start but if you do you pray to god he'll give you away i know i've I'm blessed to be able to do it now, but before I wasn't. And um, I didn't even attempt it. I always thought that Christ did away with the law. He did away with the punishment of the law. He took that beard on him. But we have to strive to do, truly strive, not, not just, eh, I'm going to attempt it. But, eh. it's, it's, this, this life, this Christian life is not easy. I'm going to tell you. Everything's against you. The world, uh, everything, but but do not worry. Why? Because Christ already defeated the world, defeated the devil, right? Understanding and victory and standing in victory is important to know who you are in Christ. All right. Well, God bless you. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.